Thank you so much. All right, eight candidates gearing up for the big night tonight in Milwaukee. So what is the best strategy for them to take on the stage? Let's break it all down with former White House press secretary and co-host of Outnumbered, Kaylee McEnany. Hey, Kaylee, way hey. over there. All right, so we're, we're standing apart because we're going to show you on this full screen uh, some of the individuals that are going to be on the stage tonight and then talk about them because you are the expert. All right, let's start with Chris Christie and Donald Trump. I mean, he is attacking him left and right. First of all, why don't they like, why doesn't he like him? What happened? I, I mean, it's anyone's guess, but if you look at polling, CBS said 9% think candidates should attack Trump. 9%. 90% say, no, don't attack Trump, focus on yourself. So if Chris Christie focuses exclusively on Trump, it's going to be a kamikaze mission. He may win over a very small segment of the party. He is number two in New mm -hmm. Hampshire, according to Emerson. But boy, um, attacking Trump, only 9% of voters want to see that. Okay, let's talk about Nikki Haley and Mike Pence, because both of them have experience working in the Trump administration. She was appointed the UN ambassador. He was the vice president. What yep. happens tonight with these two? You just hit the key word, experience. Expect to hear that from both of these two former governors, former UN ambassador. In the case of Vice President Mike Pence, a former vice president, and I talked to folks in Mike Pence's orbit. They said he expects to be the adult in the room, the seasoned politician, and the person, don't forget, he won two vice presidential debates. He demolished Kamala Harris. He demolished Tim Kaine. He's got the most experience on the stage. He's going to use it. Okay, let's talk about two of the people that America really doesn't know a lot about unless you live in their states. So we have uh, Bergram and then we have Aisha Hutchinson. What do you know about them? I know he's a billionaire. We had uh, Stuart Varney on talking about his experience, which could help our economy. Yes. How do they kind of break out and stand, stand out tonight? That's the key. Uh, they've got to get some momentum here. They don't have a lot of name recognition. You just saw with Brian, people were like, Doug who? Yeah. Uh, he's got a great story, a self-made individual. Mm -hmm. In the case of Asa Hutchinson, he's probably the second harshest Trump critic on the stage. Don't think that's going to work. But if these guys don't catch momentum, Ainsley, I wouldn't expect to see them at the next debate. Okay, what about Vivek? He is number two, according to polls. He's going to be standing, well, number three. There's Trump and then there's uh, DeSantis. He's number three right now in the polls. That's why he's going to be standing next to DeSantis tonight. He's smart, he's authentic, and he is the O word, an outsider. Remember, yeah. Donald Trump, 2016, he was the outsider. He was authentic, he was real. That's what Vivek has, but we have seen hit piece after hit piece over the last few days. That's not by accident. That's likely his rivals planting these stories. He's going right. to be standing right by Nikki Haley, who is going to be taking shots at him because she knows foreign policy, and most of the hit pieces have been on foreign well, policy. Foreign, but he said some things that most Republicans don't agree yes. with, like not funding Israel anymore, letting uh, China take Taiwan. People don't agree with that. The majority of Americans right. don't. Yeah. So how does he break away from that? Will he change his tune on, on those issues? He's got to. I mean, you mentioned Israel. We're talking about places like Iowa with huge evangelical populations, people who right. prize our relationship with Israel, Israel, not just from a foreign policy place, but from a very personal place. Correct. So he's got to separate himself from those comments. Uh, and he's got to be the same authentic person we've mm -hmm. seen. He knows how to take people on. We've seen him take on Don Lemon, Dana Bash, yeah. Chuck Todd, these media figures. We've not seen him on a debate stage. We'll be watching tonight. All right. What about his uh, videos that he's been posting? He has the tennis one yeah. a few days ago when he had the shirt off. Was that yesterday? And then this morning we saw the one of him working out with his wife doing the burpees. That's what people love. They love this kind of retail politics. We see that in Donald Trump when he goes to a Dairy Queen and just talks to people. Same kind of thing here with Vivek Ramaswamy okay. showing us his workouts with his wife, showing us what he's doing behind the scenes. It's real. It's authentic. In a day of organic social media content, uh -huh. it works. Yeah. Now, Tim Scott, one of the reasons we all love him in South Carolina, because of his story, he always says from cotton to Congress, just a few generations. Um, and he, he's just changed the trajectory of, of his family's future, yeah. their life. Bought his mom a house, bought her a car. He loves her. He adores her. He took her with her uh, to Milwaukee. He's going to be working out and praying. What does he do in addition to that? Because we love his personality, who he is. It seems like a nice, nice person. But he's got to go a little farther, right? We can't just bank on the story. You know, I think he is best positioned tonight to perhaps win the debate. And here's why I say this. He's not the person in center stage like Ron DeSantis who's going to have barbs at him. He's not the person, Vivek, coming in at number two. He's the person, I talked to his team, he's going to be focusing on his biography. This is a national introduction. And he doesn't feel like he needs a campaign reset the way some of the other campaigns are. We need to reset. Tonight's our reset moment. Mm -hmm. He thinks he can get to the top by sharing his story, sharing his optimistic vision. I don't think you'll hear anything like this on the stage other than what you hear from Tim Scott in terms of the optimism. He could be the winner of the debate. Okay, now what do we expect from the center guy
DeSantis. From Governor Ron DeSantis, all barbs will be flying at him. He has the curse of heightened expectations and the curse of the center podium, but he has a record to stand on. He has, uh, most people don't want a record. Uh, Vivek doesn't have a record, for instance, because then you can just say anything. Right. He has a conservative record to stand on. He's got to be a fighter, but he also has to have that optimism and compassion we see from Tim Scott. It is a tall order, uh, but we'll see from Governor DeSantis. Okay. I know we'll be watching. Oh, yes. You're going to be watching. It starts at 9 o'clock tonight. It'll run for two hours, and we'll be talking about it tomorrow morning as well. Well, all right. Thank you so much, Kaylee. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.